On this episode, we are at the dealer auction and it's all about the trucks to stay away from. Run, do not walk away. Run, isn't that right, Brandon? Yeah, so normally on this channel, you like to tell people what is great about trucks, what you should get, and what the testing shows that is best about certain trucks. Yes. But we're taking a little different approach today and showing you the trucks that we should not recommend. Yeah, so we'll have several trucks in this video, one after the next, and we did a lot of research to check which trucks or years of truck were problematic. So we're starting here with the Ram 1500, specifically a 2016 model with a 5.7 liter Hemi. So we found this one here at the uh, Colorado dealer auctions here near Denver. And so first of all, it looks relatively okay from the outside, right? Yeah, it seems to have held up okay. And the I'm noticing quickly that you've got a a uh, little toolbox in the back there. And if you look on the inside, it is pretty dirty. So well, it's... we can't control the yeah. cleanliness of a lot of these vehicles here at the auction. This one's definitely been used as a work truck. Yeah, let's walk. Sure. It has a longer bed, like a six and a half footer, which is nice. It's a crew cab. Keep walking over here. It's got a Hemi, so it's got dual pipes. It's got quite a bit of wiring going on. But we looked up and this truck, this year of the, he of, of the Ram 1500 has how many, 14 recalls? Yeah, 14 recalls currently on them. And I mean, some recalls are pretty small, you know, like seat belts, things like that. But this does have some big recalls like- EGR cooler. EGR cooler, the camshaft position sensor, the transmission <laughs> control module, like some big time recalls. Yes, and it also has a 5.7 with MDS, multi-displacement system. But at first I want to look at this because uh, we don't see this with brand new trucks, obviously, not a lot of miles. This is 107,000 miles, but the seat is already struggling, right? Yeah, and it's got like several layers of tape on here. So it looks like they've been dealing with this issue for a while. And another thing I commonly see on these Ram trucks is that the leather seems to come separated. I don't know if it's these clips that break or if they just give out, but I regularly see that on these Ram trucks. Yeah, so I'm not sure what it is about the 2016. I mean, this generation has been uh, going on for a long time, several years, several model years, and this engine is well known. They've had multi-displacement system cylinder deactivation since 06, if you can believe it or not. But Brent, do you want to stay right here and we'll see if we can start this up? Yeah, let's see if it's got some lifter tick. So uh, if you want to fire it up. 5.7 V8. Yeah, so regularly, if I see a Ram truck with over 100,000 miles on it here at the auction, it, I can count at least half the time it's got lifter ticks. So I wouldn't be surprised if this one does. Yeah, and it, it may be hard to hear. There you go. You hear that little ticking noise? That's just a typical sound from these Hemis, but let me hop in and let's take it for a spin. Yeah. Oh man, this thing is gross. Welcome. <laughs> Move my seat back. So a this little. this um, this truck will just to verify 107,367 miles, and we're, let's not focus about how dirty this truck is because that's not the truck's fault, right? Yeah, that's um, true. Eight-speed automatic. It does have some tire pressure monitor system warnings. I don't know if it's because these tires are actually low or if the monitors are bad, right? I mean, that's pretty much every car I look at that's at least five years old. Those uh, batteries just go in those tire pressure monitors. So yeah. generally, I don't, I don't hold that against the manufacturers. But. So the, you talked about the lifter tick. So the MDS system is meant to save fuel, right? I mean, this V8 engine is powerful. Um, I believe this one is about 395 horsepower. Oh, sorry. That's oh, I me. think it's you. <laughs> Let me put my safety belt on. Well, this truck is new enough to where it's actually warning you against, you know, just being safe. They called me out and well, I'll, we're I'll here put the, my seatbelt on. <laughs> we're at this private area, right? We're not in public. That's true. Yeah, but we are going to take it on this little test track just to kind of see if it gets up and moves like it should. So, and then, so the cam system and the lifter system, right, and the engine is designed to shut off certain cylinders to save fuel, right? I think we all like the concept of that, but the execution is not as easy, <laughs> it turns out. Yeah, and I think it's not just RAM, it's a lot of manufacturers. Yeah. You see any of that cylinder deactivation as well, it, uh, it 
be problematic. Well, Dude, it's thing... very fast. Yeah, this is peppy. That was 45 miles an hour right here in the tiny acceleration area. Well, that's pretty quick, I have to say. I, so I'm surprised, honestly. I didn't expect the uh, five sevens to be that quick. Well, and also, I mean, they sound good. Yeah. <laughs> These engines sound incredible, but the tick does not sound incredible. I mean, no. It's a little problematic there. Yeah, I would be, uh, I would be worried about this one long term for sure. So we looked. There's what? How many vehicles? Almost 500 here for sale. It's gone up since we got here, Andre. They're okay. almost at 800 now. Oh my gosh! So, so <laughs> that's a lot of vehicles every week. Um, and we tried to find an eco diesel because also the first generation eco diesel was very pro problematic. Right. But we can't. It's not here. Yep. They just don't have any this week. So but we'll find something else to show you. Sure. Sure. So I would say this. From in here, you know, it's got ventilated seats. I mean, heated steering wheel, heated seats. It's got, and the AC is blowing cold. Let me test it. And it's got power. So it's not an awful truck. No, it's not an awful truck. It's but, just, yeah. You, but as long do you want to know... choose it over others, right? <laughs> I wouldn't. There's other trucks for this, this kind of money that I would go for, personally. So that's what this video is about, right? It, it's not like... You know this truck will break tomorrow it probably won't uh, but is there something better yes for sure um, other years of ram truck would be better and well let's go to another manufacturer shall we let's do it bam and now we're with a 2008 ford f-250 with a pretty infamous 6.4 liter twin turbo power stroke v8 turbo diesel um, and this is another engine, particularly the powertrain that has been problematic in the past. And we would recommend, I would recommend that to stay away from something like this. But this King Ranch, Brandon, is quite nice, actually. Yeah, I have to say, we were looking at the inside and I kind of dig these, uh, what are these, like saddle brown seats? And look, this truck has 213,000 miles plus and the interior looks decent actually yeah i mean even like the armrests on the doors yeah it's a little still, bit used right yeah but it's they're a still in pretty used, good shape but that's a lot of miles and it also is. exemplary that this truck uh has a lot of miles it looks like it's done some work because look it's got a gooseneck hitch um so it may have been working a lot of its life and it's lived this long but like, what are those? What are those door uh, or the back seat pockets? They've got like a nice little fancy flap. I don't want to know what's inside of it. <laughs> Do you? I don't know. It just it looks really really it, schnazzy. Well, you could put for your, a work truck. Well, you could. But this is not quite a work. I mean, this is like the king ranch, right? It's the owner of the ranch that drives That's this. True. This, is, this is the boss's truck. And you could put your files in there. Yeah. Okay, your financial <laughs> statements. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Look at the, the front end and look at this giant bumper. So first of all, there is a way to find to find visually that this is a 6.4 by this smallish headlight that's kind of rectangular. So this is one way. The other way is to the way this, this hood opens. <laughs> a little bit, little bit challenging there, yeah. Andre. Yeah. Especially with that uh, grill guard. Yes. <laughs> So the grill comes with the hood, right? Yeah. So this is good and bad. So not so good is because if you're working under here, the grill could hit you in the back of the head, but you have lots of access, right? So, you know, the intercooler, the radiator. Okay. We have some oil on the inside of the, it looks like oil, uh, yeah. maybe coolant. Uh, on something the, spring up at the hood is uh, yeah. never it's, really a good It's not sign. doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> but it did it at one time. Exactly. Um, these engines were known for leaky radiators, cracked downpipes, excessive suit, low fuel economy because of suit. Um, so in 2007, the regulations changed and you had to now take care of your emissions for pickup trucks in a better way. So 2008-ish, which is this truck, this is kind of early diesel exhaust fluid system, diesel particulate filter systems. This is kind of the beginning of those, of that era. 
of truck. Generally, uh, this, generally anything that you're an early adapter of, it's <laughs> you're paying to be a test bed. You know? Yeah, we're here near a highway, so we can hear some diesel semis yeah. as well. <laughs> but uh, rating is pretty good: 350 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. So twin turbos, uh, twin turbocharged, twin battery, but it had a lot of mechanical powertrain issues. And like a six liter power stroke, you can kind of bulletproof after doing some work to it. These are very difficult to bulletproof. Yes, you can address the radiator, you can replace it. You can work on a lot of this engine, but you could be spending thousands of dollars. Let's jump in. Yeah, and this, uh, they made it just like this from 2008 to 2010. And so from what I'm seeing, it looks like maybe in 2011, they got a little better. Uh, yeah, so the 6.7 came out, the, the early 6.7s. Okay. So they just got rid of the engine entirely? They redesigned it, yes. Redesigned yeah. it, okay. Yeah, and the modern, let, let's, uh, let, actually, hold on, let me buckle up first and then you buckle up. Okay. Um, they redesigned it, but also like the modern, the latest generation of the 6.7 Power Stroke is amazing. Like we recently tested the 2023 model, has 500 horsepower high output. It did a seven second zero to 60 at elevation within a dually four by four. Wow. So, you know, that's how far we've come in the last 15 years. Yeah, so. It's a pretty big change for sure. I mean, 350 to 500. It says drive to clean the exhaust system. So it's begging us to drive it. Yeah, maybe we should go give it a nice squirt on the, uh, the test track. That'll help it out. Check engine light. Yeah, I mean, it could be something simple. It could be also like something a, catastrophic, like a like camshaft a, sensor. Well, you know. apparently not because it's it sounds healthy. Yeah, that's true. But Well, the only thing is these did have one recall that kind of scares me a little. Yeah, what is it? They had something related to the steering with the mounting flange on there where you could essentially lose complete control of your steering if it failed. Yeah, the way it mounted to the frame was not, like, almost correctly done in the factory. Yeah, and so you, if you're going to buy one of these, definitely make sure that recall is taken care of or go get it done ASAP because I would not want that to happen while I'm driving on the highway. I can't even imagine something scarier than losing all of your steering. Yeah, well, this is why this video is called, you know, trucks to stay away from <laughs> yeah. not the trucks that you should buy immediately <laughs> right exactly okay yep. well we're here on the test track okay so you're gonna you're gonna help clean out some of that uh exhaust some particulate. Of that yeah right <laughs> we're doing a good deed here right yeah, exactly we're helping this truck out now, this is a heavy beast yeah I mean, this is a four by four it's not a long bed but it's a pretty large truck it's pretty comfortable too i kind of uh I know we're My supposed to be not down. liking them, but... My foot is down. That, really? That's it? There's got to be something wrong with it. There's no way 350 horsepower is that slow. Well, that was 20 miles per hour. That's it? Oh. Let's, Let's try it again. Yeah. Maybe we'll give it one more shot. So here's what it could be. You know, if if the system, you know, didn't regen properly, right? If, if it didn't burn out a lot of its diesel particulate filter suit, right? it may be in, still in that phase where it needs to handle it before it has full power, right? That's true, yeah, it's got nowhere to let those exhaust fumes out, essentially. So it's just kind of backed up. But this truck is not filling me with confidence right now. <laughs> is it filling you with confidence? No. <laughs> I mean, if you research these, there is a long list of issues that are not just like minor little gripes or little nitpicky things, like major issues that could essentially total out mechanically your car. Yeah, uh, people talked about suit underneath the hood, <laughs> leaking radiator underneath the truck. Yeah. Uh, those are serious problems. Absolutely. All well, right, let me... Can we, can we get it up over 20 this time, you think? So I'm in drive, there's nothing special. The parking brake is not on. <laughs> You're not in four-wheel drive. Uh, it's a little bit low on fuel, but that shouldn't stop it from accelerating, right? Well, if anything, that should help it. It doesn't yeah. have as much weight. Full on, 100% throttle, 15 miles an hour. You're 20 miles it? an hour. I'm floored. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, tw uh, uh, 22 miles an hour. Uh, yeah, that's, that's this not, truck doesn't want to go. That is not healthy, for no, sure. No. So maybe everything that we know from our research is actually correct. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, maybe this is the diesel truck you should avoid. Well, well, it had a full life, 213,000 miles. At 20 miles an hour, it probably took him forever to get there. <laughs> no, but actually a heavy duty truck, you asked me like, how much should a half ton truck last? And usually manufacturers design them to about 150,000 miles. These should double its life. So, so like, like 300,000 300, yeah. is for a heavy duty truck. And this one, I mean, should have still life left in it, but it doesn't have any life right now. Yeah. Bam, now we are with a GM truck. So we want to sample everything we can. This is a 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500. And our research have said that 2014 is one of the more problematic recent years, right? Yeah, so these trucks have a lot of problems stemming from major engine issues, transmission issues, and even some electrical issues as if both major drivetrain components weren't enough. Yeah, isn't there also like transfer case yeah. issues can arise here? <laughs> yeah, exactly, like the rear differential going bad, yep. So this engine, I, um, it's 5.3, uh, so they had several engines, right, in this generation of the truck. But one of the most common is a 5.3 liter V8, um, and then of course automatic transmission. This has been a little bit modified, uh, let's fire it up and see how it runs. This one also has a few miles, 141,000 on this one. And it's been customized. So it's got wheels, tires. It looks like it had an intake, exhaust, new headlamps. The interior is mostly stock. Uh, so jump in. Yeah, so th this is one of the trucks that I tend to avoid simply because the oh, amount of it. Look at the cushion. Oh, oh that's nice. Make it a little extra comfortable for me. Um, so the elbow of the driver has had already a problem here, right? Um, kind of worn out. So that's one issue I see already, but it's a similar story. Sorry, the key. It's a similar story to that Ram MDS, right? So GM has something that's called AFM in right. this generation. It's active, basically cylinder deactivation, isn't it? Yes, active fuel management. So MDS is the RAM thing. And you see that V8? So yeah. under certain condition, it will go to four cylinder mode. Ah. So it has that kind of fuel saving technology. Let's take it for a quick spin. Yeah, I know when, because uh, I'm a big fan, honestly, of like the Suburbans and the, uh, the Yukons, uh -huh. but I tend to stick to like the GMT, 800s because after that is when they started going to that cylinder deactivation yes and that's just added a lot of complexity and issues to their engines yeah can you direct me i want to get there as fast as possible <laughs> sure just make it right here you know the uh people that work here are kind of staring at us because we're we're getting in on closing time so we got to get this one in quickly for you guys but closing time <laughs> yeah so if you just make a straight here and then a little uh if you just take this all the way to the end that'll get you right to the test little track. little kink right yep i see it no i I'm, i found myself so yeah that's problematic and also if you look at like recalls like we were talking about if you look at common problems if you just search around that unfortunately 2014 was not a good year yeah i mean it's a lot of the years of these silverados of this generation do have issues but 14 is known as one of the worst years like if you get a 18 they can still have some problems but they've kind of sorted through some of them and then in 2019 they went to the new gen trucks and they actually switched how the active management works they called it dfm uh, dynamic fuel management which is a whole new system it's a little bit more fancy but hopefully more reliable let me accelerate. All right. Yeah, let's see what it's got. Oh, hoo, hoo. Ooh, nice. Whoa. It's got some, <laughs> it's got balls. Sure beats that diesel we just drove. <laughs> That's cow. almost 45 miles an hour. I have to shut it down. That is quick. Wow. This 5.3, especially with that exhaust system, it's happy. Yeah. It's pretty peppy. Yeah. So, I mean, this one seems to run pretty good. And we understand that not every single 14 out there is going to have these issues, right? We're 
we're not saying that all these Silverados belong in a junk or any or belong in a junkyard or yeah. anything like that. We're just saying that it tends to be a common failure point. And so you're just rolling the dice by getting one of these. I'm sure there are many of you out there that have your Silverado and sure. have had no issues with it whatsoever. But there are also just as many people out there that have had them and had problems. And also it has to do with maintenance too. You know, are you doing regular maintenance, right? Are you following up on this? Um, so that's a big part of it too. Absolutely. So let me try to park this and uh, let's close this video, huh? Sounds good. All right, Brandon. So that was kind of a long day-ish because we looked at a lot of trucks. Look at this customized uh, F-150 Raptor. This is not the way I would do it. Yeah, and plus buying somebody else's customized vehicles is never really uh, my cup of tea. Honestly, I'd rather do the customization myself if I'm going to do it at all. Yeah. So there you have it. We looked at three manufacturers, right? You probably will say, well, you didn't look at Toyotas, right? Are they awesome always? Well, not quite. Because Toyota trucks, especially the ones from like 20 years ago, have rust issues, frame issues, uh, many different problems. Nissan Cummins, the latest Titans, had problems as well. We just couldn't find all those trucks all in one at one place. Watch out for that Audi. <laughs> So thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully, let us know in the comments below, what did we forget? Did we get it right? Um, would you disagree with something or would you add something to this? Maybe another year or another engine we did not consider. Of course, you know, 5.4 Triton V8 comes to mind, right? Yeah, that's uh, one that I would put on the list for sure. <laughs> the three so, valve, three valve. Three valve. You gotta be specific because yeah. the two valve people will uh, Hate yeah. on you oh, if you call oh, out oh yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> have to be very precise right yes <laughs> so thanks for joining us we'll see you next time take care